Amen. 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 It's on the back of your song. On the back of your music program. <coughs> It's going to be Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. And we do read together, starting at verse 17. Amen. So Son of man, I am made the watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked, from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is born, also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Y'all can be seated. Amen. Lord, stand. However y'all want to do it. We just, we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to go to page three. Page three.
stop, he never stops working, never stops, never stops working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, never stop, he never stops.
there. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, speak to my heart, speak to my heart, and change my life, and change my life in your precious name. In your precious name, Amen. Amen. Father God, I just ask, Lord, that as I bring forth the word this morning, Father, that it will go forth as arrows of conviction to strike at the hearts of those who hear. Lord, that it would touch someone's life and draw them to the cross, that they would see you for who you are and surrender. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated, because I'm going to. Amen. I, I'm fat and slow, so I sit. <laughs> thank, thank you for that, Ian. <laughs> uh, now, this morning is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Woo! And, 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 and unlike most churches around the world, do not refer to it as Easter. Amen. That's a whole nother sermon. So... I have some things I was going to explain about that, but we're going to jump over it and get right into the, to the word for today. Amen? Amen. The title of this message, if I had to give it a title, is The King in Zion. And our text is going to come out of Psalm chapter 2. So if you want to go ahead and turn there, when we get there, you'll have it turned. Amen. But I'm going to start out. By, with, a, with a piece of scripture from Psalm 33, 8 that will set this up so that you'll know where we're going. Psalm 33, 8, it says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Amen. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Mm -hmm. For he spoke and it was done. Amen. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. Oh, yes. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. 
He fashions their hearts individually. Yes. He considers all their works. No king, listen to this, no king is saved by the multitude of an army. Mm -hmm. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. Mm -hmm. A horse is vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Mm -hmm. So the Lord sees all men everywhere. Yes, he does. Not just everywhere, but everywhere. Amen. He knows all hearts. There's nothing we can hide from God in our heart because he made our hearts. That's right. That's right. Individually, he formed each heart. He formed us so he knows what lies within the hearts of men. Amen. Corrupted by sin. Genesis 8.20 says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Amen. Although the imaginations of his heart is evil from his youth. That's right, that's right. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. This is for all you all who are feared about climate crisis, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Until God calls it to an end, yeah. everything's going to go on just like it does. Amen. Amen. Man can't mess with the weather. That's right. For us to think we can is arrogance. That's right. But, but the key here is that, that God says the imaginations of men's hearts are evil from you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. fact, in fact, David said that, that I was conceived in sin. Amen. I Amen. was born in iniquity. And that's why when we talk about if, if you want to see the, just how wicked man is, when, when a newborn baby is born, we... we Call them vipers and diapers because you see man at, at his birth is centered on one thing, him. That's right. I want milk. I want food. I need my diaper change. I, I want to get up. That's how we are. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that shows the essence of who man is. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And whose hope is the Lord? Amen. Two key words there. Amen. Who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Amen. My hope can't be in anyone else. Verse 8, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water, which spreads its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. And here we go. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately, with not just wicked, a man's heart without the Lord is desperately wicked. Yes, it is. Yes, it, it, it is. runs after yes. sin. Yes. It chases yes. after the things of the world because that's all it wants. Yes. Without the Lord. Many ask the question who can know it? But then Jeremiah answers it in verse 10, or at least the Lord answers it. He says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So God's looking for something in us. Amen? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. In fact, Mark 7, 20 Jesus says, what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. He was talking about food here because, because the, the Jewish leaders were asking why his disciples ate without washing their hands. Mm -hmm. And he's like, look, what, you go, what goes in your mouth, that's not what defiles you. That's right. Because it goes that's through right. your system as it's eliminated. But, but he says, what comes out of man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart, 
the heart of men perceive evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, yeah. deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. James, in his letter, he, he, he explains this. He says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. That's right, that's right. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is thrown away by his own desires. Man's heart, what? Desperately wicked. It, it's desperately evil. It seeks and pursues wickedness. So by our own desires it, and enticed, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And, when, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Amen. Amen. That's that law of sin and death that we talked about in Sunday school. If I'm without Christ, my heart is, is desperately wicked. It's evil. And, and unless I turn to the Lord, then all these things that, that are within my heart, they're worldly focused. Amen. Amen. And they lead to death. So now we get to Psalm 2. Psalm 2.1. Psalmist writes, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Mm -hmm. What well, we must understand, first off, man is at war with God. Say that again, Elder. Man is at war with God. The world is at war with God. Man hates both God and his son. That's right. That's right. And they rage against them and against the truth that's set forth in the word of God. Man wants to break the ties with God's truth. Man doesn't want anything to do with God's truth. Amen. Amen. Man wants to cast away God's truth. And I read from this, this chapter a lot, but, but it goes so well with what's, what the psalmist is writing here. Romans 1.18, listen to what, what Paul writes. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men mm -hmm. who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So you can't, you can't suppress the truth in righteousness. No, you can't. No, Only you can't. unrighteousness can suppress the truth. Amen. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Man has no excuse. Ignorance is no excuse. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because God reveals himself in all of his creation. You see a bird fly. That's God's creation. Amen. You see an eagle soaring over the canyons. That's God's creation. The Amen. beauty of it. Amen. And in verse 21, he says, Because although they knew God, man knew God. In the garden, man knew God. They did not glorify him as God. Nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Amen. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And we're going to really dig into that here in a minute. Amen. Man has become foolish and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. We make God in our image. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We made God that, that looks like us, uh -huh. that acts like us. Uh -huh. and, and, and that's not God. No, it's not. Therefore, 
God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their heart. What did Jesus say? From our heart, from within, that comes to things that defile us. Well, God says, if that's what you want bad enough, have it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He'll if you that's it. what you want more than me, here. That's right. Take it. He gave them up to the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged, here we go, the truth for the lie. Mm -hmm. And worship and serve the creature, the create the creature rather than the creator. Now, what is the lie? I'm glad you asked. Amen. I knew it was burning in your heart. Yes, it was. So what's the lie? The lie is that God's word does not mean what it says. That is a lie. But that's the lie that man has bought into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Modern man, e even, even parts of what calls itself the church, have believed the lie. That's right. That's and this is the lie that Satan used in the garden mm -hmm. and still uses today to steal the souls of the weak and the easily persuaded. Here, here's the lie at work. Genesis 3, 1. This is way back. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said? That's what he said. <laughs> Are you sure? Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now notice what Satan does. And, and this is how he subtly tricks people into listening to what he has to say. Because First off, he gets to doubt whether God really said this. But then he says something that God didn't say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He says, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. God has said, you shall not eat it. That's what God said. But now Eve takes this a step further and she goes, nor shall you touch it lest you die. God didn't say that. Mm -hmm. All God said was, don't eat of this tree or you'll die. So Satan asked a question that, that God didn't say to get Eve to respond with an answer that had something that God didn't say. Yeah, yeah. You see how Satan does this? That's right. He gets us to, to play along with his game. Mm -hmm. and indeed, God didn't say this. And, and so then the serpent said to the woman, well, you surely will not die. God's not going to kill you if you eat of that, that tree. Hmm. For God knows that in that day, you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. knowing good and evil. So I'm, I'm looking out for your best interest. God's, God wants to keep something from you. Oh, right. he, he doesn't want you to know everything that he knows. But, but me, I, I'm trying to help you. I have your best interest at heart. That's the lie. You, you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. I, I promise you, you're not going to die if you do that. That's the lie. But God knows. See, God knows something that you don't. If you eat of this tree, you're going to be as smart as God. Mm -hmm. So what did Eve do? She ate it. Mm -hmm. She picked the fruit. She ate it. She gave it to Adam. He ate it. They all of a sudden we're naked. Yeah. And they go and find figs to cut fig leaves to cover themselves to hide their nakedness, which represents man's sin. Mm -hmm. When we sin, we're naked. We're exposed. That's right. That's right. 
So God comes down in the cool of the evening and he calls out to Adam, where are you? And Adam's like, I'm over here. Why are you hiding? Because I'm naked. Who told you you were naked? You didn't know naked. You had no concept of naked. You ate of that tree I told you not to eat of, didn't you? That woman you made me, made me eat it. That serpent made me eat it. All of this sin that happens in this one moment, suddenly the perversion of what God's natural beauty and design was twisted. All of a sudden, I'm naked. Mm -hmm. Then I blame. Do you see how this cascades? Yes. Yeah. And that's how man is. And God knows this. He knows our hearts. And man rages against this truth mm -hmm. that we're naked before the Lord. See, here's the problem that man has. Man challenges, and, and, and we're going to get with this. God challenges the de man challenges the definition of gender. Man challenges the definition of marriage. Man challenges the definition of morality. Man challenges the definition of truth itself. There's no absolute truth. Each one of us has our own truth. I'm living my truth. You live your truth. We're challenging what truth is. That's raging war against God. That's right. That's right. It said, I'm not doing it your way. That's what it says. That's what it says. Not only that, we challenge and twist biblical justice into social justice. Mm -hmm. God didn't crush his son on the cross for me to worry about who gets stuff. Biblical justice is Everyone wants to talk about equity. Mm -hmm. when we all want the same end result. Mm -hmm. God's kingdom and God's justice doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. His works the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts out at the same place. Yes. We were all born in sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Separated from God. But we may not all end up in heaven. That's right. Amen. Well, that's not fair. Nobody said God's fair. <laughs> the kingdom's not fair. It's exclusive. Amen. To be a son of God is an exclusive club. Amen. I like that. Amen. Everybody can't get in. Amen. Amen. Well, we should let everybody, everybody, it's, we're supposed to be inclusive. God's not. Well, that just stays right. That's mean. No, that's just. God's love calls for justice. That's biblical justice. We challenge the identity and character of Christ himself. People say there's a, there, he's the cosmic Christ. He's in everything. His resurrection wasn't physical, but it was spiritual. It was a cosmic resurrection. Now, know what Jesus you're reading about, but it ain't the one in the Bible. And we, we challenge his deity. People challenge the existence of hell. There's a lot of preachers that preach that there is no hell. Jesus talked about hell more than anybody in the Bible. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. It's real. We challenge the life of the unborn. When does life begin? Mm -hmm. I want to do it my way. When I want a child, it's a baby. When I don't want a child, it's fetal material. Mm -hmm. 
and I will go and pay a doctor to assassinate my child. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do it in this state, I'll go to another state and pay a doctor there to assassinate my unborn child. We challenge the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. Yes, he is. Yes, God he is. is holy. Amen. But yet the world rages against God. Amen. And we're told at the end of the age that all the kingdoms of the world will gather together and make war against God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his son and his saints. But here's God's response. Psalm 2, verse 4. I love this. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Uh -huh. yeah. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. And he says, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. You shall break them with a rod of iron and you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. That's the God I serve. That's the Jesus I serve. God's king who is in Zion. The son of the everlasting God. The only begotten son of the everlasting God. Who came as the just to die for the unjust. Amen. That is the king I serve. That is the king in Zion. Man can rage against God all that he wants to. And God sits in heaven and laughs. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Because he knows the end. Yes, he does. <laughs> he knows it. His king is the one who will come and bring all man's kingdoms to destruction and claim what is his. Mm -hmm. This earth belongs to Christ. He paid for it on the cross. Amen. Amen. And in that day, he will come in his glory and he will destroy the kingdoms of men. Amen. And he will set up his kingdom. Amen. He is the king in Zion. He will come from his holy hill and take what is his. And he's not going to do it with a peace accord. That's right. He's not going to do it with a treaty. Mm -hmm. He's coming in power and in glory. And God's already at work in his wrath in this world. Yes, he is. If you don't believe yes, that, listen. Romans 1.24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. A sexual revolution has taken place. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, 26, he says, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. That's a homosexual revolution. Mm -hmm. Then in Romans 1, 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. That's moral insanity That's and right. depravity. That's right. I mean. Look what's going on around here when you have... Men competing in women's sports. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you have a man celebrated as woman of the year. Uh -huh. That's insanity. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's depravity. But that's man's war against God. It says, you, you may have made us this way, but we're going to take your place and turn ourselves into something we're not. They believe. <laughs> but no matter what you do, you can't change what God made you. That's right. That's right. But yet they cried, Well, God made me trans. No, he didn't. No, he did not. No, he did not. That is a choice made Amen. from the wicked desires in the heart. And God has said, If that's what you want, Amen. but no, you're going to bear the justice of that. And here's what he says. He, he's going to bring his king to bear with a rod of iron to rule in righteousness. Revelation 19, beginning in verse 11, it says, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, 
And he who sat upon him was called faithful and true. Mm -hmm. Faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and, and, and makes war. Jesus makes war. Yes, he does. But God is love. He makes war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and his head on, on his head are many crowns. All the crowns of the kingdoms of men. When, when he comes, he will be wearing. He has the kingdoms of men become his. He already owns them. Yes. He already has the yes. crowns. Yes. He is already wearing them. He's just coming yes. to set that in place. Yes, yes, amen. amen. And he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Oh, God, yes. Mm -hmm. He is the word of God. Yes, he is. That spoken word by which everything was created. And in verse 14, and the armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed after him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, mm -hmm. that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Notice what he says here. It says that out of his mouth comes a sword with which he strikes the nation. Uh -huh. Now it says that the armies of heaven come with him. See, a lot of people teach that, that when, we, when we return with Christ, we're going to fight with him. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. That's not what it says. We're going to be witnesses to his destruction uh -huh. of the armies of men. Amen. Amen. He don't need my help. That's right. That's right. He don't need anybody's help. Amen. He's going to speak and it is going to take place. Amen. And in verse 16 it says, And he has on his robe and on his white, on his thigh, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw beasts, the, I saw the beasts, kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. They didn't go quietly. That's right, that's right. They've been ruling the earth for three and a half years, tormenting men, persecuting God's people, killing them, and now they're being dis deposed. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They're being taken off their throne and cast into the lake of fire. Amen. And the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and those who sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus, for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and not received the mark on their foreheads and their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years was finished. Here's an important sentence. This is the first resurrection. 
Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. For the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. How many first resurrections can you have? Anybody? One? Paul tells us that, that at the sound of last trumpet, those who are asleep in Christ, those who are dead in Christ will rise. Then those of us who are alive still will be caught up together with them in the air and forever we shall be with the Lord. That's the rapture of the church. Well, this is Revelation 19. Mm -hmm. And he says this is the first resurrection. And it happens when Jesus is coming to take over the earth. So, how many re first resurrections are there? One. One. So, people who tell you that we're going to be secretly whipped away before the, before the, the beast and the false prophet take over, Just say, that's free. You won't charge anything for that. Here's the moral of the story. God wins. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He has seen a victory Hallelujah. and written it down before creation yes. Yes. settled in heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Listen to what Isaiah said about it. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God. There is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Oh, yes. From ancient times. Things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. I'll do what I want. Because I'm God. Yes, not you. Yes, he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sovereign. Not you. Amen. Amen. I'm the truth. Not you. Amen. I set the divine order of everything in creation. Not you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And I've seen it all. Mm -hmm. I'm not in your timeline. I've seen what takes place at the end. Yes, I does. saw when, when the beginning of eternity happened, I was there. Yes, yes. Because I am. Then in Psalm 119, it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. Yes, he is God. He is creator. Yes. He is king. Yes. He is Lord. Yes. So we are given these words that should be taken to heart. This is after he laughs. Mm -hmm. And after he sends his wrath. Psalm 210, listen. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Notice what he says. Kiss the son, lest, lest his wrath be kindled a little. Do you think it takes all that Jesus has to wipe out everything on this planet? A little kindling of his wrath. That's all, that's all. A breath. And he could make man disappear. Mm -hmm, that's all. In his justice, he could kill us all in our sleep and be right and holy in it for things we thought, things we didn't do we knew we should, and things we did that we knew we shouldn't have. That's he right. could kill us in his in our sleep, that's right. but he doesn't. That's right. Because of his mercy, because of his grace, and because of his love for his creation. Amen, amen. I didn't say his love for man. I said his love for creation. Amen. Amen. We'll get into that in just a second. I'm almost done. About 10 more minutes. Amen. See, in James 4, 7, James tells us that we're to submit to the Lord. 
that we're to resist the devil, that we're to draw near to God, and he will draw near to me. That's right. See, here's, here's what God longs for from his creation. He is king. He is Lord. That's why I said in Sunday school that any prayer that starts out with, I, Jesus, I want to ask you into my heart, and I want to make you Lord. I don't have that authority to make him Lord. He already is Lord. Amen. Amen. My job is to submit to that authority and to draw near to him. Yes. Because if I draw near to him, he will draw near to me and we will be in union with one another. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I will be in him and him in me. We will be Amen. abiding together. And, and Jesus tells us, here's, here's the gospel. This is where I've been going with all of this, talking about man's war, man's rage against God, because this is the only cure for the rage and the war. Matthew 4, 17, it says that at that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Mark 1, 4, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the kingdom, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, the time is fulfilled. I'm here now. The kingdom of God is at hand. I'm here now. That's right. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent, believe the gospel. John 14, 6, John said to him, I am the way, the truth. Say, say those two words with me. The, the truth. truth. One more time, real loud. The, the truth. truth. Not a truth. The truth. The truth. And the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. So all the ecumenical things, all the, the interfaith movements where we want to love everybody, and, and be, include everybody that's going to heaven. Oh. It, it, you, there's only one way. Remember I said God's kingdom is inclusive. Amen. Or not inclusive. Sorry. Amen. Yeah. It's, it is an exclusive club. Yeah. Not everybody gets in. If I'm following Muhammad, I'm not getting in. If I'm following Hinduism, I'm not getting in. If you're following any of these, you're not getting in. If I'm following a false Christ, I am not getting in. So the Watchtower Society, the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, the, the Roman system that has a false Christ and a false leader, a false temple and a false sacrifice, it is not getting in. Only in Christ alone, through faith alone, uh -huh. by his grace alone, am I getting into the kingdom. Amen. He is the door. He is the gate. He is the way. Amen. He makes that as clear as possible. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. God doesn't work in gray. No, he doesn't. It's black and white. Yes, it is. It's truth or not. That's it's right. yes or no. Amen. I'm either with him or against him. 99.999% will not do it. That's right. John 3. We'll finish up here. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. He goes on and says, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. But here's, here's the crux of it. We celebrate Resurrection Sunday. But, and here's the story of why we do this. Because in John... Three in, in ver beginning in verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Everybody always stops right there. But here's where it gets interesting. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They're at war with the one who has come to save them. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. It's why they don't like God. It's why they don't like Jesus. Because coming before Jesus means I make it. And I can't cover my own nakedness. See, in the garden, after God dealt with them, it says that he made coverings for them out of animal skins. He sacrificed an animal on his own to cover Adam and Eve. The first sacrifice for sin was in the garden. The first shedding of blood for sin was in the garden that God would cover their sin, their nakedness. Only God can cover the nakedness of man's sin. And he does that with his sacrifice. God doing that in a the garden was a foreshadowing of God crushing his own son on the cross brutally and smiling while he did it because it paid the penalty owed to him for our sin. Wicked men don't want to come into the light because it exposes God calls them and says, where are you? And they're like, we're hiding because we're naked. That's right. That's right, Dale. That's right. Oh, God. And then he says, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Friend, if you're watching today, if you're listening, if you're hearing what I'm saying, if you have not submitted to the authority and the kingship and the lordship of Jesus Christ, you are at war with God because you are living life your own way. The biggest sin that man commits is telling God, I can do it without you. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he's holding out his hand saying, but you're naked. I can cover you. Mm -hmm. The penalty that you owe me is your life. But I have paid that penalty. And all you have to do now is submit to the authority and the kingship and the lordship of Christ. Come to him with a broken heart, repenting of all sin. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. You can't have forgiveness without repentance. Amen. And he calls out today, come. See, I'm not going to, I don't say some two-minute prayer. Because that's not going to save anybody. I don't know what you need to repent from. Amen. Amen. Only you know what you need to repent of. And I can't take you into the Holy of Holies. All I can do is present you the information and offer the opportunity for you to come before God. Who loves you. Who gave his son for you who will wash you and cleanse you, make you new, 
transform you. So if you're watching today, or if you hear these words, I, I implore you as an ambassador of Christ, cry out to Jesus. If all you can do is say the name of Jesus, he'll hear it. Yes, Lord. That yes. name, whoever calls yes. on the name of the Lord, yes. will be saved. Yes. For there's no other name by which man must be saved yes, except Lord. Jesus. Yes. And if you cry out to that, he will meet you where you are. He will change your life. I'm just letting it sink in for a minute. See, because he's walking by today. Today is the day to reach out and touch the human yes, soul. It is. Yes, it is. We're not guaranteed another breath. We're not guaranteed another day. Amen. And we're not guaranteed another opportunity that, that God will give us to, to come to his son. Amen. Amen. So I implore you today to do so. Father God, I thank you, Lord. For your word. Lord, I tried to give your message the best I can. Lord, I've done so with the heaviness of heart that you have laid upon me. Father, that your word be true and it pierce the hearts of men. Lord, that someone who has heard it today will come to you while you may be found. That their life may be transformed and changed. Yes, Lord. Father, as we prepare to, to take communion this morning, Father, to memorialize that price that was paid on our behalf. Yes, Lord. We ask that you would touch us and be with us. Continue to challenge us, but most of all, change us, Lord, that we be more like Jesus. Yes, Lord. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.